Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to cover JPA relationships and specifically we're going to focus on just the one-to-one -one relationships. So that's using the at one-to-one -one annotation. In future videos we'll go into the other ones that are that exist in JPA as well. So let's get straight into it. So quick overview, JPA has a one-to-one -one relationship annotation and that marks your entities and their relationships they have with other entities. So these can exist in a direction, so it can be a single direction or unidirectional or in multiple directions or bidirectional, so two ways. Um, we're going to cover both in this video. In a second we'll jump right into the code. Um, and there's some rules that we'll, we'll touch on as well, uh, but it's probably best to understand these by just using some code examples. So let's, yeah, and as we go into code examples as well, we'll cover the foreign keys uh, from both the indirection and bidirectional, and we're going to use mapped by and join column annotations. And we're also going to use a join table example, which we might want to use for some cases with a one to one annotation. So enough of that, let's jump into the code. So to start things off, let's create a class. Let's create a very simple entity. Um, let's call it employee. Employee. Okay, so let's give it the entity annotation. Entity annotation. And let's also give it getters and setters. So it's using the Lombok um, annotations, and that, that basically just gives us auto generated getters and setters for our fields in our class. Um, and also a string. So we're going to need an ID, uh, a primary key ID right for our table. So let's give it the ID annotation and then let's also give it a generated value with a, uh, a strategy of type auto. And that just basically says whatever database you're using, use auto generated type. And we're going to be using for this example a H2 in memory database, just to keep it simple. Um, and let's also give our employee a name. So a string and name. Okay. So great idea, we've got a name. Now we've got everything we need to basically create our first test of this employee entity. So uh Initial employee entity, and let's let's create one, right? So employee equals new employee, uh, and all we have to do is just set the name, give it a good name, Jack, and you know now we can print out employee. So we run our tests. And we can see there's our employee. It's got a default value of zero for the ID because we didn't set it. Um, the name's Jack. So that's great. But you know, this is JPA. We want to be persisting our entities into the database or whatever data store that we're using. So let's create a interface. Um, and let's call this our employee repository. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the um, the string the spring data JPA um, library. So we're going to extend the JPA repository, and we define our entity class. So it's an employee, and our primary key ID type. So that's a long. And that's all we need to be able to persist our employee now. So we need to inject our instance of repository. So we'll just auto wire that in. And that's going to be our employee repository. And then now we can uh, save it. So employee repository dot save 
should save our employee into the database. So that's going to that's going to return the saved instance in there. So we can assert equals that our let's just import that. So what we're going to assert is our actual value. So the saved um, name equals expected name. So the expected name will be the employee name that we set up top. And we can run this. And let's take a look at the output. So it's going to run, it's going to create our tables, and it's going to save this in there and then check that our name, save name is equal to our name that we set up here. So that's all passed, that's all good. Let's take a quick look at what um, SQL queries get printed out here. So we can see here, we've got Hibernate, Create Table, Employee, Great, that's our entity name. We've got our primary keys and we've got our name and the primary keys ID. Great, that's all good. And we can say insert statement down here when we go and save it. So that's great. But, uh, you know, we can print out the employee as well if we wanted to. Uh, but that's great, you know, we, we want to get into the the entity relationship. So we're going to get into the one-to-one -one, um, relationship. So let's let's say our, our software has evolved. We want to model the, uh, the concept that an employee has a workstation. So our, let's assume our ERD is already created and we're following that. So an employee has one workstation. Let's keep it simple. So create an entity class, a workstation, and it's going to be an entity. And just like our employee, it's going to have an ID. So we can copy that across as well. Um, and we also want getters and setters. So that can come across as well. Now, we've got a workstation. We've got our ID. Uh, so let's 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 create a relationship between these two. So for the first case, let's say the employee has a unidirectional a unidirectional relationship with a workstation. So an employee has one workstation. So let's create that. So private um, workstation and that has a one to one relationship. So that is one employee can have one workstation, but the workstation has no idea of the employee. So uh, this is a unidirectional relationship. Um, and if we save this, if we run this, what we'll see is um, both tables get created. We'll have an employee table, which we saw before, and we'll have a workstation table. So this workstation table is a new one. Um, employees already existed. So in our tests, we want to create a workstation. Workstation. And we want to ins we want to set it right. So we want to set our workstation to be equal to that workstation. That's great. And then we'll go and save that into our employee, and that will go through. Now we can run this, and it'll probably not work, right? The reason why it probably won't work is we're not cascading our saves. So whenever we save a workstation, that's not going to cascade to the workstation. It's it's only going to save. The employee entity. So to quickly fix that, we can give it a cascade of all, cascade type all, and you can see right there as we ran this, it's failed, and because it references unsaved instance. So we can fix that with this cascade all uh, type on there which just means it's going to cascade down to all the child entities and save those as well for us. So we run our test again and and then there we go. So let's take a quick look at what uh, JPA does here. So 
the credit tables, uh, employee workstation, great. And we also add the table employee and we add a foreign key constraint. That's great as well. So we've got a unidirectional relationship, we've got our foreign key added to our employee table. And everything's working. And then we can see as well when we actually get the employee back that we save, the workstation is set with the ID of two, which is auto generated for us. And everything's there. That's great. Now let's say our our software changes over time, and now we're going to have a bi-directional relationship with our employee. So that is, the workstation knows about the employee. So we'll create our employee on our workstation entity, and we'll say one to one. Now, the thing with one-to-one -one relationships is, with one-to-one -one bi-directional relationships, one side has to be defined as the owning side. So it makes sense to have the employee as the owning side, but you know, depending on how you designed it, 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 it could go on either side. Um, for this purpose, let's assume that this side is the referring side and the employee is the owning side. So on the workstation, we use the mapped by key on the annotation and we say mapped by, and then this refers back to the employee instance here. So this uh, workstation field variable here is what we need to put in the mapped by annotation here. And then we run this. And what's going to happen here is we've got a stack overflow exception will happen. right? And the reason that is, or most likely will happen, let's see. The reason that is is because we've got two string on our Employee, actually no, it didn't happen. Let's let's see what happens. So we've got ah, that's why it didn't happen, right? So we we set our workstation around employee, but we didn't set the uh, employee on the workstation, um, and that's why we didn't get a stack overflow exception. So so see here, we set employee we'll set the workstation. So if we do the other direction, because this was for unidirectional, but if we now do it for bidirectional, so we set the workstation employee as well. And run this again. Uh, this will produce a stack overflow exception because we are saying employee string, which then calls workstation string, which then calls employee string, which keeps going back and forth, right? So here we go: stack overflow exception, two string, and that's because they both keep going back and forth between each other. Um, so we can we can fix this. Uh, there's a number of ways to fix this. One quick and easy way is to basically exclude it from the Lombok um, JSON generation, or the actual two-string method, sorry. So the two-string exclude it from there, and that will then break that chain, and then stop it recursively reprinting two-string. And then this would pass. It's great. So we've got our employee, we've got our workstation, and we've got the ID. It's all there. This is a bidirectional uh, relationship in our entity. So the employee knows of the workstation, and the workstation knows of the employee. And the mapped by refers back to the owner of this relationship, that is the employee. And the employee is the owner of this relationship, this bidirectional relationship. So. That is one-to-one, unidirectional and bidirectional relationships in JPA. I think that'll do it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, give the video a like. If you want to see more, leave me a comment if you have any questions. Uh, and that's about it. Bye for now.